There's Arctic Shark Games here coming at you with another Minecraft Bedrock Edition Command Tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on ticking areas and all about ticking areas. If you use commands, you know that we need to use ticking areas, so today's video is going to be for you. If you find today's video helpful, please go ahead and throw a like on the video as well as subscribe over here at Arctic Shark Games on YouTube and Arctic Shark Games on Twitch. If you're running into a little bit of trouble adding ticking areas or testing ticking areas or any of that kind of stuff, go ahead and jump onto our Discord Shark Commanders, which I will throw a link in the description as well well as in the comments. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the ticking area command. So ticking areas are best added when you have the game rule command feedback turned on, so that when you actually type things in the chat, it'll go ahead and talk to you and give you some feedback. So let's just go ahead and for first of all add a ticking area in the basic sense of it. So we'll go forward slash ticking area. And then we go add and it's going to give us the option to add coordinates or the option to add a circle. So if you guys are familiar with my DX, DY, DZ areas video or if you're familiar with like fill commands and stuff like that, you can actually choose two outside corners and go from coordinate set to coordinate set when you add them. But I recommend that you actually just add circles. So we're going to go ahead and hit add circle. And then we're going to choose the center position. So if you're standing in the center, you can just go ahead and put three tildes for your position. And then we're going to choose a radius, and this time we're just going to choose a small radius of 1, which you guys are going to find out is actually pretty big, because when we're talking about a radius in a command like this one here with ticking area, we're actually talking about chunks, not blocks. So whatever you put in the radius category is actually going to be multiplied by 16. So that would be 16 block radius is what I'm selecting by typing in 1. And then you're going to choose a name of the ticking area. This is actually optional, but I do suggest you type a name in as it makes it a lot easier to go ahead and remove the ticking areas or list the ticking areas and all that kind of stuff. And then you have a prelude boolean, which basically means it's asking if the ticking area is going to be loaded right when the world loads or if it's going to load as default right after the world loads. Um, I don't really know exactly how you would use that, but if you needed a command to run absolutely instantly when the world loaded, you'd put true. Um, I usually put nothing in that category. You could put false if it doesn't matter to you and you want it to just load normal. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter here and we're going to start our first ticking area. You can see it added a ticking area centered at this coordinate with a radius of one chunk. And it says I have three out of ten ticking areas in use because I do have one over in my spawn coordinates and then I have one located in the nether as well. So the next portion of the ticking area command that I'd like to cover here is ticking area list. This is a great way to see what's actually loaded in your world. You're going to want to try to use only what you need for ticking areas. So you don't really want to be adding those radiuses to be too large if you don't need them, and you don't want to be using unnecessary ticking areas either. So we're going to list our ticking areas, and you can see I have one at spawn with a radius of four chunks, and I have one here called temp with a radius of one chunk, and then it says I have three but only list two, and what that means is the third one's actually located in the nether dimension, so if I wanted to check that one, I would go into the nether and then run that same list command. Now to remove ticking areas is pretty much the same thing as add ticking area remove and then you can remove them based on their coordinate position if you remember where they're located or if you went ahead and named them like we talked about earlier this is where it kind of makes it easier for you here and you can go ahead and just remove it by the name temp. So now you can see I have two out of ten ticking areas again and it removed that one there. Now let's go ahead and add ourselves another ticking area back in so if we go ticking area add circle center coordinate one and then we're just going to keep using the name temp. I like to use a ticking area named temp when I'm testing things so that I can always check later when I list them. If temp's still there that means I forgot to remove it. So anyways we have a radius of one on our temporary ticking area. So you can see here I've actually gone ahead and made us a big old grid here. I've chunk aligned this grid best I could. So you can see here this green section here would be a radius of 1. So I was standing in this chunk here in the center, right? So when I chose that center coordinate, it's going to choose one chunk all the way around my existing chunk will all stay loaded. So we're doing a ticking area of 1. Uh, we're actually creating a very large area. And then so on and so forth, it's 2, 3, and 4. 4 is the maximum radius that you're able to actually select with a ticking area, which you can see 4 would select a massive area. It would also do the orange, the yellow, and the green. Whereas if you did 3, it would also do the yellow and the green. 2 is going to also do the green and the yellow, if that all makes sense to you there. 
So I created a, a little bit of a test for us here to try to envision a little bit more how these ticking areas work. Because we're standing here anyways in this area, so it's basically as if this ticking area was already loaded anyways because I'm hanging out here. So I went ahead and put a redstone block on a say command there that says we're testing the green area. So you can see that we're going to fly out of this area now and go ahead and actually deload that area. And if we were to do that before I had added a ticking area, once we get that out of render distance there, obviously that command wouldn't run anymore, right? And you can see that it is still testing that green area for us there. So you can know that it is in fact loaded over there. Say commands, tossing those inside of your ticking areas are a great way to find out if your ticking areas are actually loaded. And then you can see again that if we go over here into this number two area, which we still have a radius of one selected, this number two area actually is not going to be loaded once we fly to there. So we're testing the yellow, it says in chat, and it's going to keep spamming green and then yellow at us as we fly away. But as we got a little bit away from that, the yellow does not spam in chat for us anymore. If we wanted to fix that, and we would like to have a radius of 2 now, what we're going to do is we're going to land back in the center here, and I'm going to go ahead and remove my taking area of temp. And then we're going to add a taking area the same way we did before, and we're going to name it temp, but we're going to do a radius of 2 two this time. So that's actually going to go ahead and load the green area and the yellow area as well. And now you can see that we have all the way to that yellow loaded and we fly away here once again. We'll get that yellow deloaded for us here. Get far away from it. You can see that I've deloaded that yellow section now that does in fact have that command block but yet that command is still running. So I hope that guy that gives you guys an idea of basically how these ticking areas expand when you go ahead and add another number to them. If we had, had it if we had added a three here, we would end up with a ticking area of three. And then if three chunks wide, and if we added a four, we'd end up with a ticking area of four chunks wide, and that would keep all those guys there loaded. So you can see now we're spamming all kinds of colors into the chat. I'm gonna fly away and it's gonna keep only yellow and green loaded unless we go back over there and we change that to a four. So just for one more test purposes, we'll change that over to a 4, and then we'll move on to the remaining syntax left in the actual ticking area. So we're going to go ahead and remove this ticking area first. So we're going to remove temps so that we don't have it, because it won't let you add two ticking areas with the same name. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add it as 4. And now you can see that it's going to keep all those areas nice and loaded for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these redstone blocks just for the purposes of not spamming that chat for us anymore. And then when we're standing over here, we're going to go ahead and play with the remaining sections of ticking area. So when we type ticking area in the chat, we went over a couple of details there. We went over add, list, and remove, but we did not go over prelude or remove all. If I was to type in remove all, this would delete all three ticking areas that I have. Or actually, I believe it would delete just the two on this dimension, and then I would have to go into the nether to remove the third one. And then preload is basically the same thing that we talked about there with that preload boolean. Um, if you had typed one of your ticking areas when you added it in with the preload boolean as true, this is also going to do the same thing. So you can now take one of your existing ticking areas and you can preload it if you'd like to. Um, Preloading a ticking area, I, to be honest with you, don't fully understand myself exactly why we would need to do that, but I think it is a handy thing for creators to go ahead and get a few commands run on the map before actual players have loaded. So anyways, if you guys find this video helpful, uh, please go ahead and like and subscribe over here to Arctic Shark Games on YouTube and Arctic Shark Games on Twitch. And if you're having a little bit of trouble, go ahead and jump in that Shark Commander's Discord there as well, which I will throw a link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and keep commanding.